Okay guys, today is January 31st, we're in North Central PA, and we're fishing with my buddy Dan Collins. No, I'm just kidding guys, this is episode 5, <laughs> <laughs> episode 5 of the Beyond the River podcast. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Tyler Olrog. I'm here with my buddy Dan Collins um, of Hardway Outdoors. You want to say a little hello? Hello, uh, thanks for roasting me right off the bat there. I, I, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely pleased to be on here. I was I heard Tyler was doing a podcast, and I was I was wa- I uh, listened to Ryan's podcast. I just got done uh, listening to the Catch Cam one, and I saw a little bit of your your dad and brother. It was funny, but uh, definitely pleased to be here, and uh, yeah, talk a little about fly fishing or whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, and like Ryan and you were one of the first few people I had in mind having on the podcast. Um, you know, honestly, you know, I mentioned three years ago, three and a half years ago now, um, when I first came to college here in Mansfield. And, um, you know, I don't think I'd really be sitting here doing this today had, you know, we'd not kind of been lab, we were lab partners. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you wore the Orvis hat and like, I don't like talking to people except for like this stuff. Like when I talk about fishing, which is why this, this works for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if you weren't wearing that Orvis hat and you were like my lab partner, I probably wouldn't have said a freaking word to you. Yeah. And then... Um, was that zoology? Zoology. Yeah. 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 <laughs> zoology lab. Um, and then we got to chat and you're like, hey, I'll take you out fishing and show you around. Um, and I actually, you know, just kind of hopped on YouTube and was searching for kind of stuff to fish around the area. Because when you come to Mansfield, you see the Tioga. Yeah. Then it runs right downtown, and you're like, yeah, dude, there's a stream right downtown. <laughs> yeah. And then you come here, and they're like, oh, there's acid uh, it's, mine. It's battery acid. <laughs> there's no fish in there. And um, so, but, so I was looking for places to fish, and one of your videos pops up. Um, I send a text to my dad. I'm like, holy shit, like, this is my lab partner. <laughs> He's going to take me fishing. Um, and I actually just watched the video before we hopped on. Um, and you, you know, to me, you caught that nice brown on Pine Creek, mm-hmm. and I was like, like, back then, I was like, holy shit, like this is legit. Um, <laughs> and then, um, you know, we finally went out fishing. We went brook trout fishing. Um, I caught my first trout in PA, my first fish in PA, and then I I, I dropped it. I remember that. Yeah, I caught I caught a rainbow brown palomino and a brook trout that day. Was that the same day? No, that was oh, that was the season opener. Oh, okay. That was one of the first times we went fishing too together. Was that your first native brook trout? Native brookie. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember that one. And I dropped it on a rock, and it died. Ah, oh, yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> that poor thing. Yeah, poor little guy. Um, but yeah, so I, de- I definitely have appreciated, you know, now even me being in the comp scene, you know, that's somewhat of your doing as well. Um, you know, you've been a, a huge help. Um, I love watching your YouTube videos. Um, do you just want to talk about Harbay Outdoors for a little bit? Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I started off, I think I was a freshman in high school. To It, it was around 2000, December 2011 is when I made the YouTube channel. It was originally called Fish and Rebel 10. And uh, that didn't... I wanted to switch it up, you know, Hardway Outdoors. I came up with the title because... Uh, I do a lot of traditional archery and I fly fish. And if you look at it, it's kind of a hard way to do things. I just thought it was a creative title. And it uh, started off, I was just on YouTube. My, my one buddy I tied flies with in high school had his YouTube channel. I was like, I can do that. That'd be fun to do that. And I, I grew up watching Leatherwood Outdoors on YouTube. Pennsylvania guys uh, from Western PA they make a lot of traditional archery videos and good, really good hunting videos. They're just super simple, and I just love watching super simple videos like that. I was like, I can do that. It's like, so I just kind of I started off filming for like the two first three years on my iPod, using my iPod Touch, and I would edit the videos on my iPod. And looking back, they're like terrible quality, but that's just how I did it. And I was making like homemade camera arms to try to film archery hunts with my iPod, and it was it was just super low budget. I don't know, but just the camera, just the uh, computer that I had, my parents' laptop, you couldn't upload any videos to it for some reason. They all get corrupted, so I had to just do that for th- two or three years. And finally, they got a new laptop and I could use it to make videos. And yeah, that's 2011, so 
this will be the eighth year I've been doing it. And just so recently, past two or three years, of, I've gained a, uh, a bigger following. This. But I, I'm definitely very thankful for every person that I've met through YouTube, uh, connecting through people. Uh, my buddy Justin, we from around Philly, uh, we met through YouTube. Ryan, uh, Shelly, he kind of watched my videos and we kind of clicked through YouTube and the social media and just a ton of other people. I can't even think of everybody. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a huge part of my life. Uh, I love doing it just for fun. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned all the people that you got to reach. Since I've started doing just this, which is not very, hasn't been very long, um, you know, I've had plenty of people reach out to me too. And it's, it's cool the impact that this kind of stuff has because, you know, in the end, we're all fly fishermen. We all kind of, it's a lot easier. You know, we, we're fly fishermen. We, we think the same. We like the same things. And, you know, you really connect with people when you're fly fishing because you have that similarity and whatnot. Yeah, like uh, the fly fishing community is unreal. Like I am trying to run the college fly fishing competition, put it all together and asking for donations and stuff. And everybody's so cool. And I'm about donations and help it out and I'm truly blessed for that and before I flew down to Florida around the first week of the year I was messaging some people on Instagram to try to get a lead on some spots or some tips anything they wanted to give me I was just messaging locals and I every single one of them that answered was super helpful super uh, just a just a huge help to to making sure I was successful and and I was, I was telling them, hey, if you're ever in Pennsylvania, I don't know why you'd be here, but like, if you were ever here, I would put you on some trout. And just the community is awesome. And I'm definitely truly blessed to be a part of it. Yeah, and that's cool that you mentioned that you did that because I had a similar experience when I was trying to write um, the one series that did my blog about how to be a guide. You know, that was kind of something run through my head that maybe this is what I want to do in the future. And so I, I, I reached out to some of these big time people on Instagram, um, like Cheyenne Orvis, uh, Jody Maldis, um, and some smaller guides. And most of them got back to me. Like even yeah. some of the guys that have like 20,000 like followers and mm -hmm. stuff that I'm sure get random DMs all the time. Yeah. Like they got back to me. Um, you know, I had a few phone calls. I was on the phone with Jody Maldis the one day for 40 minutes. That's and, awesome. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the Hookshots video. But he runs, they do Midnight Mousing. I, were they on the Delaware? Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, I talked to him about that for about 20 minutes yeah. after he gave me some advice about guiding and whatnot. But he was just a super cool dude. Um, and I know last couple of weeks ago, I was talking to those guys about Kelly Gallup mm -hmm. as we're doing a little bit more streamer fishing with Ryan and whatnot. And they said, call the slide in. Like, I'm, I'm sure Kelly will talk to you because he actually works there. Yeah. Um, you know that's his business and he works there himself and they said give him a call like he'll talk to you and like that's cool that these even these big get name guys are, are willing to you know lend a helping hand for you know i'm 20 or 21 you know yeah. relatively long, young guys coming up in the sport um it's pretty cool to see yeah it's the social social media is a huge part of fly fishing now and instagram and uh, YouTube, everybody's making YouTube videos. I feel now, and it's awesome to see that you know, everybody's enjoying the sport, and it's another way to connect through to everybody. And definitely uh, helps everybody just get better. I think you know. Uh, I remember whenever Ryan first started like Poco, Potter County anglers or something or whatever, and seeing that, I'm like, what? There's there's fish that big like yeah. in those little streams, and that's just through social media. And then I started fishing the little streams and catching big fish from streamers. It's, it, and I would have never done that. Instagram wasn't a thing. You know? yep. Same thing. You know, I've been I've been on YouTube learning how to tie some of these streamers that I've seen, which some of them I'm probably never going to use. I just tie them because they look oh, yeah, sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I'll eventually use them. Um, but yeah, it's it's cool to see. Um, but like I said, like you and I are, are fairly young people in this sport. Um, you know, being outdoors these days is, is not that big of a it's not that common for people our age uh -huh. and um how do you think you know your parents and the way you were raised kind of helped you develop that passion for fly fishing and for traditional bow hunting uh 
ever since I was a kid, I, like just growing up, my dad always had deer mounts and turkey mounts on the walls and everything. And I yeah, I've actually been to your house and like I remember describing it to my dad, and I was like, <laughs> it's a miniature version of Cabela's. Yeah, it's like Cabela's. <laughs> yeah, but uh, growing up around all the deer mounts and just seeing those, I think really like I don't know, just really pushed me to get into the outdoors. And I remember. We would we'd be sitting and watching the outdoor channel with my dad and my dad always like a deer would come on the screen and he'd be like shh 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 be quiet we're hunt, we're hunting you know probably my brother was being loud or something he was just telling him to shut up but like that got me really hooked and I remember some early turkey hunts my dad would just put me between his legs and I wasn't even big enough to like hold a gun and just getting me out there super early in my life it was like ingrained in my head that this is like it and. I'll probably never change. Yeah, and, you know, the, the same thing. I was very fortunate to have grandparents and parents. You know, my mom would set a timer when I was little. Um, you know, kids these days, what they do is they play video games. Yeah. And, you know, I obviously still like to play video games myself, mm -hmm. but my, my mom would set uh, the, micro, the microwave timer would be set for an hour. Mm -hmm. And after that hour, me and my brother were kicked outside, and, you know, we were playing, like, Cowboys and Indians, yeah, and, and like imaginative stuff that kids really yeah. do these days. And then you know, when we were ten, we got BB guns, mm -hmm. and you know we were taught how to safely handle guns and all that kind of stuff. And then we would go hunting with my grandfather, and then my you know my my dad actually retook his hunter safety course with my brother and I, and then we got into hunting. And then my dad got laid off of work, um, the one summer. And that's when we got we started bass fishing, mm -hmm. and then from there I found my dad's fly rod in the basement that he had bought to get with a buddy. It was almost brand new, mm -hmm. and then my my neighbor across the street at the time was big into TU, and um, he showed us how to fly cast. And we were out. It was no video games from then on, really. And yeah, it, yeah. And it was just we were in the front lawn fly casting. And my mom's like telling the neighbor like, "What did you do? Like these kids are like addicted now." And he goes, yeah, but they could be doing way worse things. Yeah. And it's 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 cool to see where it's because yeah, I I started when I was eleven fly fishing. Mm -hmm. It's been nine years now, and just to see you know my progression even just the last few years has been huge since coming down to PA. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely the same thing. It, it's cool to meet you and you know with the fisheries program here to meet all these guys. Yeah. Because. You know, there's not a lot of people that do what we do anymore. No, there, there isn't. And, I, and going back to that, kind of how I got into it, some of my, for, to, for really fly fishing, it was always, uh, around fifth grade, my buddy Thomas and I would go to Jim Sports Center in Clearfield and tie flies in just fifth grade. Like, we just started to, to get into fly tying. And, you know, Rich Ferrer was there and Tracy were there and seeing them and they're like tying all these cool flies and stuff my buddy pat was there and todd delucia and uh it was it seeing all these like people that were older than me i was like oh i want to be them i want to be like them and just like and they were catching big wild brown trout and all these wild brown trout and spring creek and fishing creek and everywhere and i was like oh man i want to do that so bad and so i got a fly rod i don't know probably around fifth grade it was a Cortland, like twenty dollar setup yeah. from Walmart, and it came with this orange ring. It was like twenty inches in diameter, and I sat in my yard and just cast it, tried to cast into it. I tied like a some poly yarn under the mm -hmm. tippet and yep. just like tried to cast and cast and cast into it. And the first fish I ever caught on a fly rod was a bluegill at Parker Dam with my dad on a like a little hairs of your nymph that was mm -hmm. terribly tied yep. by. From that came in the package with the fly rod, and, and we were just sitting. I was just catching bluegill after bluegill. I'm like, this is so fun. Like, and since then, it's game over. Like, yeah, been in trouble since. <laughs> I think it, yeah, exactly, yeah. and I think we've all started with the bluegill ponds, um, just because. I mean, even when we were little kids, Bob and worm fishing. That's where oh, yeah. parents took us. Yep. Um, but I remember I caught my first trout on my home water on my birthday, actually, that's awesome. in a stream, and I was using this like streamer thing that like I would never use in the yeah. but it just kind of happened and I remember the photo we took with it it's a little, little nine inch brown and I'm lipping the thing like a bass nice. but of course it didn't have teeth yeah. at that size but, <laughs> but yeah it's just it's crazy to see how, how far that we've come 
Um, and, you know, last year was probably the most trout I've ever caught in a year, um, mainly because I went fishing way more. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm excited for this year is that I don't have, you know, I have this whole spring to fish. I normally don't get the yeah. spring to fish. And actually, the first year I got to fish with you was in the spring. I had messed up my foot. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't get to run track. And, you know, that wasn't, you know, running has been a huge part of my life. Um, and you know, I'm no longer doing that. I've stepped away from that. Um, but back then I couldn't do it because of an injury, you know, that wasn't easy to take. And then we would go fishing and I was, we were fishing almost most every weekend in the mm -hmm. spring. Um, and you know, that was sweet and that definitely got me big into it. And then you did a comp, a fly comp, and then you're like, dude, you should try this. And I did it, a comp got absolutely freaking destroyed <laughs> and then i did the next one and i caught more fish than you did but you still beat me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was ridiculous yeah. but um but yeah so um so now this is your third season of comp fishing my third season of comp fishing um what have you how have you progressed as an angler through comp fishing so far um uh competition fishing it's, I remember it was probably 2015, I tried to get into a competition. Rich, Rich, that's when I first started really talk to Rich, and he's like, sign up for this fall competition on the Little Juniata, and I I tried to, and the registration filled up, I'm like, ah. So I, the next spring after that, I think it was 2016, I, I started doing them. And uh, it just kind of like, Watching other people, I think, is a huge part. I got to learn so much. Like, from when I started competition fishing to now, I think I've increased tenfold as, as an angler. And I've, I've probably made as many, like, friends. Like, I, you know, competition fishing, I don't really look at it like going and catching all the fish. Like, I just love hanging out with everybody. And it's just a really great community to be a part of. But as far as angling, I've, I've definitely improved just from watching people uh, that are on Team USA, fishing against them, and really pushing myself to try to beat people on Team USA. It's, it's a lot of fun, and just definitely a great atmosphere everybody has, and to be a part of it's great. And, you know, you've been excelling, too. You've had quite a few, not, you've had quite a few top three finishes, including this past summertime with the masters mm -hmm. yeah top three with that was a probably one of the most competitive fields um yeah that there, we've had yeah there's a few guys on team usa i just that whole week i pretty much dedicated to fishing spring creek and practicing and it paid off and i was that was fun but i don't i don't care about the winning and stuff i just like being with everybody well yeah, yeah. i mean and, and you gotta think like we go there that's it's a two-day event, mm -hmm. um, and it usually requires you being there Friday night, or at least in the afternoon, to pre-fish. Um, and then you really only get to fish for eight hours. And that's, yeah. a, that's a whole weekend mm -hmm. away, you know, you, in a hotel, your car, or whatever you stay. You'd make the 45-minute drive from home. Um, but, yeah, you really don't get to fish that much when you go to a comp. No, you don't. But you get to hang out with all the guys. Um, everyone's willing to help each other. Yeah. For and, sure. And, um, you know, and it, it's funny, um, that textbook up there on the counter is environmental ethics book. I remember when we were in that class, you was before a comp and you're like, I, how much money you bet me that I beat Pat Weiss this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I bet you a hundred dollars he kicks your ass. <laughs> yeah. And that uh, was a fishing creek. Yeah. The deep freeze fish, fishing creek. Yeah. And, uh, I'm like, yeah, I bet you a hundred dollars. And we shook on it and I still owe you like 80 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Beat him. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so you showed up, um, you only caught like four fish. Three we both caught four, four fish, I think. Yeah. Five. I think it might've been five. But it was freezing cold outside. It was terrible. I, I dropped two fish because I had to try to net them with my hand because my net was frozen in my back. It was, that was terribly cold. But I had the neoprenes on, so it was all right. <laughs> I'm sure Rich loved that. I talked to Tracy about that a few weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, Dan, please don't catch a fish because I don't want to get my hands wet. Um, but yeah, that's sweet. 
Um, so let's talk a little bit about hunting. You know, I'm not super into hunting myself. Um, yeah. But this past bow season, you know, you really put in a lot of work, and it was it was cool to watch, um, watch everything that went down through YouTube, which is one of the cool things about your channels. We kind of get to experience that with you. So I remember driving on the on the highway, and I see your car, and I'm like, I know what that crazy guy is yeah, doing. Yeah. Um, but in you know, you hunted every day, but two days this past archery season with your mm -hmm. traditional bow and you saw some really big bucks oh yeah from what i i saw in your your footage and then you finally got a buck and you were in tears yep and you know i something i've talked about with a few people um and i was just like to me watching you and i like i knew how much it meant to you and then to see you just freaking break down and like <laughs> i've never there's the first time i ever seen you cry yeah and you're just sobbing. And I'm like, well, the deer wasn't even that big. Oh, no. But, like, you're just sobbing. Like, what? It, and it was cool to see because it, it meant that much to you. Like, you saw your passion in the forefront. It was like, this is what this is all about. Yeah. You know, this is what hunting is supposed to be about. This is what fishing is supposed to be about. This is what the outdoors yeah. is about. Um, just what, what did that mean to you? And in the moment, you know, all your hard work and whatnot. That moment. I mean, this past archery season was the hardest honestly probably the hardest i've ever worked for anything and definitely the hardest i've ever hunted uh pre-season scouting hiking and every hunt that i did i was hiking a mile or two miles from the from the car and put in a lot of time and i would have 8 30s monday wednesday friday and i would try i i tried my best to get out before all my 8 30s for an hour if it's just an hour, I would try to get out. And the one hunt I had was the couple of days before I got my buck with the bow. I it, I got up a little bit late. I had like literally a thirty minute time frame to hunt, and that and I I got thirty yards from this like one thirty class buck, and I was just I was so worried about crunching time. I just got in there too quick, but I probably could have got that buck if I was a little more patient. But that was just. I try to make, to try to get out there as, as much as I possibly could this past season. It paid off. And then to have it all pan out, you know, the snow, uh, and to hike up, it was about a mile and a half from the car, and have the snow, and to come up with a game plan that day to play the wind the way it was on the, on the, the, on the mountain, and just from being in there a few times and knowing how the deer like to move, uh, and having it all come together that that moment was an amazing moment and to have all put all that time in have to do it all and ethically put the put the deer down quickly it was just you could ask and have a blood trail in the snow like I, it was just too perfect of a moment and i'm very thankful for that and that's and to do it all by myself is awesome and my buddy ty uh came and helped me drag it out it was it was so awesome and i loved replaying in my head yeah that was it was definitely cool to watch you know it's something that I wanted other people to see um, because, you know, that's what this is all about and that passion and especially sharing that with others. And hopefully it motivates other people to get outdoors and try to follow doing the same thing. Maybe they're not with a, a recurve bow, um, but just hunting in general. Yeah. And people think like fly fishing is my number one, but it's traditional archery. It's archery season is my number one. As soon as our tree season hits, I don't touch a fly rod. And it's it's ridiculous because when you know, like when you when people know you the way that I know you, and you know Ryan and I talked about this, and like this we talked about it after the when I recorded with him, and it's like when you know how much Dan loves to fish, yeah, and then like you realize that he doesn't fish for like a few months. It was four months. Yeah, for hunting season, like he's got a disease. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Yeah. I, I never in a million years would have thought that. Because, but I was like texting you like, dude, let's go fishing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, nah, it's hunting season. Yeah, I, everybody was posting steelhead pictures and musky yeah. that they were catching in the fall, and I was like, I don't care. It didn't fade. I yeah. don't care. Like I just would yeah. rather hunt. Yeah, and like I was just harassing you. Like I would rather see you follow and do which, yeah, yeah. what you really want to do. Yeah, um, I wouldn't mind fishing with you. Know, <laughs> you can't hunt on Sundays. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, I'm I'm definitely never ashamed for you to be like, no man, I'm hunting mm -hmm. because I I know that's where your heart is. That's what you want to be doing. 
Um, and you know, that's cool, especially because I know how much fly fishing means to you. And so for you to skip out on fly fishing, yeah. it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, I don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. Because I sit in the deer stand and I just like, hmm, this is dumb. <laughs> I should have went fishing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, coming from someone that really doesn't, um, isn't a huge hunter, you know, I have hunted, I've, I've gotten a buck before, I've gotten deer before. Um, you know, I've, believe it or not, I've never missed a shot with a rifle on deer. I have missed three turkeys with a shotgun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, it doesn't make any sense because yeah. the, the spread of yeah. the bull, and but no, I've missed, and one of them was at 10 yards. boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but, so, when you're out there, you're hunting every day, and and sometimes you saw quite a few deer, but when you're when you're not seeing anything, what is it that keeps you in the game? What keeps me in it's just any second, you know, like even with like streamer fishing, yeah. you compare it any any second, it could change. You know, it, it could literally take thirty seconds for a buck to walk in and you shoot it and it's dead. Thirty seconds, you know it, and this past season. Uh, I was seeing deer every single time I went out. Like I was just being super aggressive and getting into spots where I was like 100% confident, like I'm going to see a deer if I sit here. And putting myself in situations like that, I it really kept me in the game. But whenever there are tough days when there's nothing moving, and but you just always know in the back of your head it can change in 30 seconds. It's all it takes, and that's what keeps me going. Yeah, and, and like you said with streamer fishing, like it's it's the next cast. Oh yeah, that's the time that that monster brown crushes. It's, yep. For you, it's the next thirty seconds that that monster buck walks yeah. in. Yep. Which I wouldn't mind shooting a monster buck, but mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm gonna put in. How many days did you hunt? I couldn't. I don't. Pennsylvania archery season was probably a month and a half. Probably it's like a six week season. And you and missed two you days. You could hunt six of the days of a week. Okay. Yeah. And you missed two days. Missed two days. So you're looking at 34 days. Or, yeah, or more, yeah. Yeah, or more. Yeah. That's insane. From October to mid-November. And then even as soon as I got my buck, there was that was the last week of archery season. My buddy Jimmy came up, and I and I went hunting with him on the last day. And I took I was taking Ty and Graham out in mm-hmm. rifle season, yep. hunting as much as I could. It was fun. Yep. And, you know, that's funny because I actually, it reminds me of freshman year when I went out turkey hunting with you and I, I remember that I ran the camera um, and we had some turkeys come in, not, we didn't actually see them. That was a great day. Yeah. That was, because that was actually, because I haven't turkey hunted in a long time. We've had some issues with coyotes and other things eating the eggs. So our population has kind of been down yeah. where I hunt and, um, and even when they do come in, they, they don't come in gobbling where I hunt because they're afraid Mm -hmm. and so that was the first thing because a gobbling turkey like is one of the coolest sounds like that'll make you like it chills yep chills hair on the back of your neck stand up yeah um but yeah those are definitely cool and even uh, for me like i when i have deer come in like i'm still shaking like i still get pumped Mm -hmm. i still get the buck fever but i just don't have the patience that i do when i'm fishing um which which is weird to have patience when i'm fishing because i'm not a very patient person at all um but yeah, it, it was cool for me to. It was cool for me to watch. I did, haven't seen the Thai video because I knew Thai missed one. I've seen all your other videos other than that one. But you know, to watch your progression over the hunting season it was it was cool. My, something my grandfather watched. Awesome. Um, something my you know he's he's been he's big in hunting. Mm-hmm. His birthday is actually the opening day of turkey. Awesome. And him and my uncle. That's what they've always done. They've gone turkey hunting on his birthday. Um, and you know, my dad watches your videos. Sometimes I think your dad loves my dad. My dad loves you more than he loves me. <laughs> hey, um, I have the effect on dads. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I was just hope he wouldn't use social media to try to get your autograph or yeah. I'm surprised he didn't make a shrine of you when you came and stayed at the house and we went steelhead fishing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I, yeah. Thanks to, for, to them for, for watching, you know, it's, it's crazy how how many people just watch me and like look up to me. I'm like, don't why? Don't, I'm just making videos. Like, <laughs> yeah. don't need to yeah. worship me or whatever. But I don't know. It, it's it's cool. People see me in public and be all excited. I'm like, I'm probably more excited to see you yeah. recognize me than you are to see me. And it's it's fun. 
and I've had people like see me in public and then they'll like they won't say anything and they'll comment like I saw you but I was too afraid to say hi I was like <laughs> what are you doing I won't say hi yeah That's right. De- definitely say hi nice dude um, he would definitely love to talk to you um, but so you're almost are you at 4k subscribers Pro- like 3800 I looked today 3800 yeah on YouTube so you have you're, you're working towards 4k yep it's a that's a that's a big audience you know we even talked about just how many viewers I get you know even just a couple hundred people you know it's amazing the impact you can have and I've been this I've not as on the same scale but it's nice to see the comments and the support that people give you oh the support is unreal like as soon as I'll put a video out there'll be like five comments like in the first 10 minutes I'm like oh my gosh mm-hmm. this is this is awesome and people are so awesome yeah you know, I get positive comments all the time, and I'm so thankful for that. It's awesome. Um, so this upcoming season, what kind of what kind of videos are you looking at putting out? Um, you've tried a few different things. You have your traditional style, um, and then you've been mixing it up with some other types of videos. You want to touch on that at all? Yeah, I, you know, I just have like, for me, if I'm gonna watch a fly fishing video, I, I don't like the all uh, beat music drowning out all the sound like the the sounds of the stream Mm -hmm. actual like audio and i try to make my videos how i would like to watch a fly fish just super simple to the point catch a ton of fish you know like no bs and i don't think that's what everyone wants to see i think people are are like you know more artistic more well video more uh well edited videos and I, I do want to try to uh, put more effort, it, probably into filming other people. I think I'm just so self-filming, put the camera up, stand in front of it, fish, and it's just kind of re- repetitive. And I, I, I want to like film other people or have other, some people film me and just get some cool angles. I've tried like overlaying guitar that I'll write, acoustic guitar, and I just don't get that many views. As I was, as I would like to see, so I gotta definitely should switch some stuff up, I think. But yeah, just more, probably more informative videos. I, I think people like to the Euro nymphing videos, and how the Euro nymph. So I'll probably make a video like that. But your base, your whole thing is, is you want to make a video that you would want to watch yourself. Yeah, it's super yeah. to the point. And as long as you're doing that, like that's what you're happy with. You yeah, like, yeah. You don't yeah. care what anyone else is doing. You want to do you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome, dude. Yeah. That's the way to way to do it and stick to who you are and, yeah. and your mission, what you want to do. Um, so as an angler, as a hunter, um, you know, where do you hope that this all takes you in the future? You know, even with your YouTube channel. I've never even really thought about it. Like, I just started making YouTube videos for fun when it all began, and and now I I make a little bit of money on it. And I, you know, like to to be like full time at it would be like unbelievable. Like, I don't ever picture anything like that happening. But if that ever happened, that would be so awesome. But I'll, I'll I don't think I'll ever stop making videos. I uh, just I love filming hunts and sharing it with everybody. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. Just where gotta I, take it it's where just, it goes. It's just go do it with the flow. Go with the flow, and uh, I can't even watch like the outdoor channel anymore. Just everybody's cramming sponsors down your throat, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I don't really want to get into it. I just can't watch them. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's like they're supposed to be hunting and fishing, and yeah, they're and only really hunting and fishing for five and, minutes, and they're hunting cornfields and food plots and stuff. I'm like, go. Go try to kill a public land buck in PA yeah. or something, you know, but what are you going to do? Have you ever seen Meat Eaters? I have. I really, like, even someone that doesn't enjoy... I love that show. That's yeah. probably my favorite one. Even someone that doesn't really enjoy... I love watching his... He just, see, he just and obviously I've never met him, but just seems like a great dude. I I feel like, that, same with, you know, seeing you with your buck, you know, that's what hunting's all about is that guy. Yeah. And, you know, just loving the outdoors and finding satisfaction and yeah. just and just that um so two questions here what's your your most favorite all-time memory fishing and what's your and well fishing or hunting off camera and then on camera Jeez. off camera hunting memory so many 
I, I, I hold the the memories of my dad and I turkey hunting so close. I remember it's probably the earliest memory ever I have. That we were just sitting there turkey hunting, and this red fox comes in, and I just remember that I was so young. That was, and seeing that just got me so excited, like I was shaking. And I remember we popped up a ground blind one time. We're archery hunting, and just little stuff like that. He had a PA elk tag in 2011, and I got to hunt with him. It was 2013, maybe, and I got to hunt with him. I don't have much film of that, and that was fun. Um, and just random fishing memories of my grandpa and my dad off camera. On camera, though, my my favorite memory would definitely be my first ever buck with the recurve. It was an eight point. I got back home in public land, and uh, the day before that, I had like a four point and a five point come right under my tree, and I was going to try to shoot the five point be because he was a little bigger, and uh, he ended up seeing me and ran off. I was so disgruntled, and I already got a doe earlier that season with my bow. It was my first archery kill, and to like have a buck come in, and I just blew it. I was like, oh my gosh. I suck. And uh, next day, I just I was in the same tree, and a doe came down, and then I heard something coming down the hill. I was like, okay, got the binoculars up and saw this big white rat coming. I'm just I'm shaking. The buck came down to the doe, and then he turned and came right towards me, and looked at me. I'm like, here we go again. He's gonna he's gonna run, but luckily it was the rut. And he was kind of stupid, and uh, he just jumped and turned. Cording away, I shot, and he ran off. And I watched him die at like eighty yards away, and that—that's what I. From that moment, that's I'm like hooked. That's what traditional mm -hmm. archery. That's why I love it way more than fly fishing. Just to put it all together like that, and I don't know. And you know, you gotta have them close because I remember yeah. you said you had that one thirty class buck at thirty yards. I'm like thirty yards. Why didn't you shoot it? Yeah, and you're like it's gotta be closer. If I if I shot a compound, I would I would have probably had some really good opportunities at some really big bucks. You know, I I've been bow hunting I don't know seven or eight years I think or more. Every year I've had a buck in a down range within thirty yards every single year. So, but I've definitely could have had some opportunities with some big bucks if I yeah. shot compound. But I, it's I don't care about killing a big buck or whatever it's I love the challenge of traditional archery and I think it makes me a much better hunter I, I'm focused on getting a deer close so I set up closer to trails closer to areas where I think deer are going to walk and I have to put myself in the best position whereas a compound guys they can sit back a little bit and kind of mm -hmm. shoot farther off but I definitely think it makes me a better better yeah. hunter shooting traditional you kind of have to Think about all the variables more closely, because you gotta get that deer close, and even getting it closer, your heart's gotta be thumping when that yes any size deer walks yeah. in that close. Yeah, I, I think it was probably four times this season I could have spit on deer, does. Yeah, I I didn't have a tag up here for a doe, but I've had I had so many walk under me I could just spit on them, but and that's when it's like you start shaking. Yeah, that's yeah, fun. that's cool. Yeah. Um, so how about fishing? Give me a, a fishing moment, to either on camera or off camera. On camera, definitely the one with you. Whenever I snap that big brown big trout, that was what I was gonna think. Yeah, yeah. That haunts me. Yeah. <laughs> I, you, you and Ryan, I think we're talking smack on it. Yeah. In the podcast, but uh, that to see the fish turn the video, mm -hmm. like I don't even watch that video. <laughs> I just I've give me nightmares. <laughs> But that was definitely it. That was fun. Yeah. But, you know, the thing about that fish and, you know, it's something that I've talked about before is, you know, the ones that get away. Um, and, you know, I don't think we'd still be talking about that fish if um, if you had if I landed it. If you'd landed it. I yeah. think we would. I think we'd be like, hey, it'd be like a little thought. You know, I think yeah. you definitely, because it was a big fish. So I think we definitely remember it. But I don't think it'd be talked about as much as it did, had you land it. Yeah, that even just not even not excluding that fish, the, that whole day on camera, that was the most fish I've ever caught in a day with a fly rod. 
I probably netted over 60 fish and you did the same mm -hmm. and Rich caught a bunch and we probably had over 150 fish to the net that day. It was insane. And then to end it with that fish, it was like, okay, that, yeah. uh, that was awesome. It was yeah. definitely awesome to, to, to see a fish that big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to see something that big is, you know, a gift. And, you know, it had chased my fish out of the water. That's insane. And, you know, it's funny looking back because um, I look at the gear that I was wearing. I still carried that sling pack and the, like, mini chest pack. Yeah. And now, now I have my more sophisticated yeah, setup. Yeah. But, like... It, I, yeah, it's fun to just look back on videos and see where I've come from and the gear I use. I used to have, yeah. like, a, a, a Orvis blue orvis like side pack it mm -hmm. was like a sling it was, and it's and using like really cheap nine foot five weights it, and it's fun yeah. you know seeing where you came from you get to see because i remember we were even just a few day, a few weeks ago we were watching you um in the lecture hall and you're shooting trick shots yeah the trick shot video. yeah <laughs> with your recurve yeah. and even if i was just watching that one from 2016 which is the first time i've seen just to see the, the way that you changed, you know, I haven't noticed personally because I've seen you the last three and a half years how mm -hmm. you've changed, you know, look wise. But you know, back then you still had your little baby face. You, yeah. know, you didn't have the beard that you have right mm -hmm. now. It's it's kind of almost funny to look back yeah, and, and see that. And when I first started, I don't even think I hit puberty yet. And it, I wish I would have waited till I hit puberty <laughs> <laughs> and not had a iPod, but. It's fun to look back at that stuff. Yeah, I mean, you'll never. It, it's cool because you'll you'll never. It'll always be there. Yeah, it'll always be on the internet. You'll be like, yeah, this is what I what I did when I was your yeah. age. If you ever have kids or whatnot, yeah. Um, just kind of look back. Um, but anything you want to add, you know? I don't. Just a huge thank you, just to everybody. I, I try to be humble and and really just understand where I've came from. Uh, just small town of PA. I mean, and through YouTube, I think is just the biggest thing that's that's got me to meet so many good, great people. And fly fishing, I owe so much to and my dad, and getting me a traditional archery. And I don't know. Just thank you to everybody. Thank you for having me here. And yeah, yeah. And so, if you want to see more Dan's content, you can. It's YouTube at Hardway Outdoors. Um, Facebook at Hardware Outdoors, Instagram, Instagram, and Instagram, and you know a lot of pictures and stuff, stories. You can especially during hunting season. I know you were constantly posting yep. um, pictures of some of the deer that would walk in that you, you passed up and whatnot. But lots of great content over at Hardware Outdoors. You know I enjoy watching myself, so does my family, and so do a lot of other people. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I highly recommend it. Um, you know when you're done listening to this, head over there and check it out. But thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you next time.